Imagine this. You're in a 24 hour fitness in the corner all by yourself. Your headphones are on, you're focused, and you're getting your bicep curls in. You're having a great workout, and then out of nowhere, some jackal comes sprinting over and says, hey, I think you're going a little bit too fast in your reps. You really need to slow down and let the muscle work more. If you go too fast, it doesn't let the muscle work enough. And you start thinking to yourself, oh shit, maybe I've been doing this all wrong the whole time. And then, before you can change anything, boom, comes sprinting over a strength conditioning coach who works with middle school soccer players. He smashes that guy over the place and goes, no, 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 no. Do everything as fast as you can. You don't want to teach yourself to be slow. And then you go, oh, wait a minute. Well, if I go too fast, I don't work muscle. But if I don't go fast enough, I learn to be slow. Oh, crap, what do I do? Well, good thing you came to this video today because I'm gonna answer your question for you. The age old question, what's on the tip of everyone's mind in America. Should I do my repetitions as fast as I possibly can? Or should I go as slow? Should I really slow down and do 20, 30, 40 second reps or as long as I can? Well, if this is anything besides the first video of mine you've ever seen, you know the answer. And so we first have to ask the question of, well, what's the goal? Why are you doing the bicep curl in the first place? What are we training for? In other words, what's the outcome we're looking to get? Because the real answer is both are, of those gentlemen or ladies were right and both were wrong. Depends on the context. What are we doing the curl for? And so I'm going to cut straight to the chase here and tell you my answers. I like to think about strength conditioning or exercise or resistance training even more specifically as giving you kind of six different Adapt possible adaptations. So, so I'm going to go through each one right now and tell you whether you should do your repetitions fast, at a normal speed, or intentionally slow. Well, let's start off with the first one, and that's what I call skill development. So imagine you're trying to get better at a movement, say a snatch, or a vertical jump, or a sprint, or even a squat for that matter. I think it's actually important to do some repetitions at all three different speeds. So of course, going slow to make sure you're understanding the position, your sequencing's proper, uh, your, the, your technique is in the right place. Going slow helps there. Well, the same thing with normal speed, of course. Well, the advantage of also going fast is it actually is really difficult to mimic proper movement mechanics and all those other things if you only go slow and then you actually try to execute them fast. So imagine someone who only practices squatting at a really slow speed and then they think they're gonna be able to replicate those mechanics when they go really fast or when they go really heavy. It's just not gonna happen. You can do all the really slow stepping mechanics you want when you're trying to work on someone's moving, running speed, but as soon as they then actually take off in, in actual speed, all that's gonna to go to waste. And so you do need to practice speed across, or your skill movements across all three speed types, and particularly fast, right? And as you gradually improve your speed at say 80%, then try to go 82%. Notice you have a technical breakdown. Okay, great. Then try to get better at that percent. And slowly get yourself up to as fast as possible. But don't eliminate fast stuff even for skill development, right? So physical therapists, athletic trainers, keep that in mind when you're trying to improve someone's mechanics, whether it's squatting or running or foot position, etc. Don't forget to ask them to do the same thing with some speed. The next adaptation, speed or power, uh, remember power is force times velocity. So I'm going to kind of lump these two in because it shares a lot of uh, what you would find in speed development. And then we'll get into force development or strength in the next one. So that one's pretty obvious. In that case, do things that are fast. Of course, the caveat with here, and I should say this for all of the things I'm talking about, is we're assuming you're doing these things with good technique. So we're rarely going to advocate someone do something at a speed that completely ruins their positioning or their mechanics or their technique. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, assuming you can handle at least pretty good or, or 90 plus percent or something of your technique, then try to go as fast as possible. If you want to get faster, you have to go fast. The other thing I would actually argue here, and this is in some other videos that I'll be doing or have done, is over speed training. Uh, people really forget about things like that. A good example is a lot of people have done speed work where they do some sprints and say drag a sled or a parachute. But how many of you have done the opposite, where you actually use an implement to pull you and make you go faster than you're normally capable of? That's called overspeed training, and it's highly, highly effective for speed and power development. Okay, no real need to go slow here. Again, if it's a skill issue, then that goes back to skill. But once you have the skill down, 
if the goal is power or speed, there's no real advantage to going even normal speed or slow. Try to go fast. For strength, you can use a combination. It depends on what you're trying to do. Of course, strength is, is force, you know, and that equals mass times acceleration. So accelerating improves force production. So going fast makes a ton of sense there. But you can also do normal or slow speed. A good example of this would be pause squats or pause deadlifts or pause bench or pause pull-ups, things like that. Isometrics, uh, eccentrics, even slow eccentrics require a tremendous amount of, tremendous amount of force production um, because you're having to actually hold things in different positions so the time under tension goes way up. You can also load them a lot heavier than you can concentric stuff. So I would say, I would make an argument that you probably want to hedge your bets more towards normal and fast more often, but there is still some times when you could do slow for strength development. Hypertrophy is mostly the no, normal to slow. Um, you don't really need to go as fast as possible in your repetitions for that. You can do a little bit of it, but you're probably going to get more bang for your buck uh, for the normal and the slow for hypertrophy. Now, you can see my other videos on the mechanics uh, of hypertrophy development, or the mechanisms, rather. And that'll help you understand why, right? We need a couple of things to happen in order to induce hypertrophy, and you're not going to get those as much by going really fast with your repetitions. For fat loss, it doesn't matter. There's an argument for all of these things. In fact, I would, I would really suggest you use a combination. Check out the physiology of fat loss videos. Endurance would be the same thing, right? It depends on what type of endurance we're talking about. Are we talking about aerobic endurance, long duration endurance, uh, anaerobic endurance? high intensity interval endurance, muscular endurance, what are we really getting at? Uh, but you can make an example for all of these things. Uh, we could do a squat, for example. You can build up some great muscular endurance by doing wall sits for a minute. You could also get them by doing glute bridges as fast as you can for 100 repetitions or whatever, right? So we can make an argument across the board. The last one then, kind of the extra adaptation I put in here for, for health or overall wellness, you should do a combination for all of the things I explained, right? So to me, you'll have to see one of the health videos, but that's really a combination of speed, strength, power, hypertrophy, and endurance, and skill. And so if those are all requisites to being healthy, then we need to train across the spectrum of speeds as well. I hope that helped, and we'll catch you next time on 5-Minute, hopefully a little bit less than that, Fizz. Thanks for your support.